Hey guys, it's me again. Just wanted to do a quick video to show you something that came in the mail today, which is actually pretty cool. As you know, I already did the inverter mod for my uh, FR Sky X7 here to get the Crossfire micro transmitter working. Uh, it was not an easy mod. Uh, there's lots of people who have done it by this point. No, the inverter is very small, so it's hard to solder to, and you have to do some direct circuit board work, which is not fun. In response to that, a lot of people who are a lot smarter than I have come up with some different ways of doing this mod, and this is one of them. This little number right here is a breakout board with the inverter pre-soldered on it and a couple pads and a little bit of wires. All this adds up to a much easier way to perform the inverter mod on your FR Sky X7. Tiny little inverter on there. Very small. Very tiny little chip. So not only does this make it a little bit easier to get everything where you need to be on the inverter, but putting on this little board, you can put a little piece of double-sided tape on there and stick it in the inside. It'll be a lot more, uh, a lot better protected inside of your X7 itself. So really cool idea. Now this is sent to me by a gentleman by the name of Christian. I want to say Biancini, Biancini. I'm really bad at pronunciation, so I apologize. But uh, Christian, thank you for this. I'll link to his post down in the description, and I'll put a little bar up, maybe. Um, you can order this from him, or uh, he's actually posted in a couple different places uh, the plans itself, so you can order the PCB from uh, anywhere online that, that does that sort of thing. Um, you even include some wires, very small gauge, but perfect for this kind of work and uh, will definitely make things easier. So I'm actually going to undo the mod that I already did and replace it with this one, which is kind of silly, but I wanted to give it a shot. So we'll see how that turns out. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. My abilities with the soldering iron are not great, and I know that I have a lot of bad habits. So I'm going to walk through doing this installation and uh, kind of show you everything, but I'm not going to go in depth. There are better videos for that. Stinger Swarm did a great one, and I'm just going to leave it up to the pros. So if you really want to know how to do this mod, check out those videos. But I want to prove to you that I did, in fact, do it. So here we go. So first thing, I'm just removing the back of the transmitter here. Uh, there's just four screws that hold it in place. Um, two are accessible right there on the back. The other two are, I believe, under the battery cover there. And once those four screws are out, uh, the whole thing should lift right off and you've got access to everything there. It would make it easier later if I had removed the jog wheel from the front, but I forgot. I, I do it later, um, but you can just put a small screwdriver in there and it pops right off. Um, but that'll make it a lot easier to lift this board out later. Uh, there are, I believe, eight screws that hold the bottom board in place. Uh, just take those eight screws out and set them aside. And then over on the right, uh, there's a little silver thing, and that's actually the uh, haptic feedback or the vibrator, essentially, um, right there. You just kind of lift it out of its hatch there, and then you can actually fold this board right up uh, once that jug wheel is removed. Now again, I'd already done the mod once, uh, just using the transistor by itself, so uh, I'm looking at that here, uh, as you can see the little transistor there, or the inverter, sorry, and uh, the wires coming to it, so I'm just going to cut that out. Uh, for this version, I went ahead and reused the same cables, although I did shorten them, just because I didn't want to take a chance on trying to resolder this stuff. It is very small. Um, again, Stinger Swarm's video covers the whole process, and there's a couple other people who have done videos as well. Um, I did the mod, but... I'll be honest, I just didn't trust myself to get it right a second time. Alright, so now I'm removing that jog wheel, like I said. Just a little flathead screwdriver into there, pops right off, and uh, now you can lift up that board. You can completely disassemble the board um, by, re by removing the uh, connectors on, along the top of it, and then you can remove that part for easier soldering. I just left it in place uh, and folded it back when I put the wires in and held it in place uh, vertically with some helping hands. So now that I've got the original inverter out of the place, I'm going to go ahead and tin the pads on the breakout board that was provided. Um, the pads are clearly labeled for power, ground, in, and out, and that's the input of the inverter and the output of the inverter. Um, just give them a little, a little zap there uh, with a little bit of solder to tin these up. Um, again, my original intention was to go ahead and use the wires uh, that Christian provided, but uh, I was afraid I wouldn't get some of those uh, solder points on the circuit board right the second time. They're very small and my hands are shaky and my soldering iron is just not up to snuff. So I ended up using the same wires but I did shorten them and so here I am retinning those. And then once they're retinned I go ahead and solder uh, my power and my ground in place. 
Now, it doesn't take much. There's not a lot of material here. So it's just a quick tap and get everything in place. Now for the last two pins, what you're going to want to do is the pad labeled out is the output of the inverter and you want to solder that to the pad of the Q400 where you removed the transistor from the circuit board and the input you want to solder onto the S port pin of that three pin connector on the bottom of the board. The S port pin, if you're looking at it from this angle, is the one farthest to the left and it's actually labeled S.PT or SPT for S port. Uh, once those wires are all connected, I just use a little piece of double-sided foam tape right on the back of the board and put it on that chip that's sitting there and uh, just hold it in place. And that's it. All that's left to do is replace all the screws and put everything back in how it's supposed to go. Once everything's back in place, we'll snap the Crossfire module in and power this puppy on. Fingers crossed. And it boots. All right, so then we just go and pick a model that I had already configured. I was flying my Fody with the Crossfire before. We're going to go ahead and load up the script once I remember how to do that. Oh, that's right. Okay. So we'll go down here to scripts, and we actually want to execute uh, under Crossfire. We want to execute the Crossfire.lua just by holding in the button and then hitting execute. It should list your Crossfire Micro TX. That's a really good sign. And hit it again, and there you go. If it's pulling in this data, it's working. It's that simple. So there you have it. Mod's all done. Looks nice and clean. It's in place. It works, which is fantastic. So thanks again, Christian, for sending that out. Uh, check the description for a link to his information if you want to get your own. Uh, and I'll also post a link to where he's posted up the files if you want to order from somewhere else. Thanks again. Like and subscribe and all that fun stuff, and I'll see you soon.